Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my very first video. So thank you for watching. My name is Belange Okanju and on this channel, I'm going to document my journey as an entrepreneur, both past, present and future alongside talking about subjects that I am extremely passionate about. And that is of course, entrepreneurship, uh, business, mindset and communications and by that i mean branding marketing and advertising so for my very first video i just wanted to have a quick recap of six things that i wish i knew when i was 20 and starting out that i know now and these six things would have absolutely changed the trajectory of uh, my business ventures that I had then, but life is life and you know, you go with the flow. So the first thing is taking a hundred percent responsibility for your life. Now this is extremely important. And the reason why it is important, well, it was very important for me was that, you know, when you grow up from a church background you know a protestant black african church background you learn all kinds of beliefs that you want to blame something or everything on somebody else and it's never really your fault or when things go well you also give all of the the accolades so to speak to somebody else and it's almost as if you are just a pawn in the middle of two great energies but what I came to find as you know I was going through my journey and you know going through all the ups and downs is that the more responsibilities I took on for my actions and where I wanted to go well the better I felt about it to be very honest that was you know something big for me um, as an individual something to identify with was taking a hundred percent responsibility for my actions my life it led me to one of the sayings i posted on on the gram was that if you refuse to live by design then by someone else's design you shall live and when i started to read more and more into big companies and big institutions i was like okay so so many things that are going on in my day-to-day -day life you feel as if like it's it's really under your control but it really isn't and i started to learn that more and more as i dived into the power of communications, especially advertising and how advertising is used to make people do things or make people not do things that they may or may not want to do. So when I started to go into that, I started to really become more self-conscious and more self-aware of some of the decisions that I was making that was causing certain things to happen in my life and of course certain things not to happen in my life. The first big thing for me was taking that absolute personal responsibility. It was like 100% APR, 100% absolute personal responsibility. A quote that I don't know where it came from. You know, I feel like it came from me, but you know, there's been great people way, way before me. So the moment you give up the right to think for yourself, you also give up the right to govern your future that really hit home for me what it was really saying was that those who love to give responsibilities for decisions in their life to somebody else they also give up the right to control their future so the second thing is something i really took on recently and it's simply that when you remove fear life becomes more fun now i understand if you live in a very social media or media full stop kind of lifestyle the fear of certain things is very very in your face it's very apparent but the moment you can learn to remove or reduce the fear of judgment the fear of failure the fear of winning, the fear of being different, the fear of putting yourself out there. 
then life becomes more fun. So the topic of fear is such a huge topic and I go into it when I have, you know, my personal clients, um, I go into it a lot further, but the topic of fear and how it stops so much people from living their life to their fullest potential is really, really painful to be very honest. You know, it's something that it's actually my uncle was the one that, you know, really brought this home to me as we were having the conversations and he's really big on legal stuff. So he's like, when you remove the fear, things become more fun. And for me, the, the fear of judgment, the fear of failure um, was massive because you don't want to look like an idiot, you know? And because of that, you really do stop yourself from doing so many uh, big things. You stop yourself from trying. And the only thing you do when you stop trying is you guarantee failure. And if you just look at the success of so many people on the YouTube platform or on Instagram or on TikTok, you can see that they have reduced or completely eliminated or managed for that matter their fears of judgment or failure or looking silly and they've just gone with it and it has reaped so many good benefits for them so the second thing is removing managing or reducing the fear factor and on a side note um, there's a very good book called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday, I, I believe. Obstacle is the Way. Very good book on that subject. So number three, the power of the subconscious mind. Now, I cannot tell you how long I can speak about this subject for because coming into the awareness of the power of the subconscious mind has been absolutely massive for me. Over the past 12 months, I have dived into it full on with, with amazement of the power of the subconscious mind. It's the part of the, of the brain or the spirit or whatever you want to call it that is responsible for our habits and it's responsible for our actions and our behaviors. Uh, like depending on what you read, it's anywhere between 60 to 95% of what we do is based on our subconscious. So of course, learning how to work with your subconscious, reprogram your subconscious is very, very important if you are on the path of, you know, achieving your goals or, um, succeeding in big achievements knowing how to work with your subconscious is very very important and this is something that if i was aware of in my 20s it would have been a game changer so if you are in your 20s or early 30s understanding the power of the subconscious mind which is the title of a book as well is going to absolutely revolutionize your life so number four will be knowing the difference between investing and spending when you spend you have no focus on it ever coming back you're just spending you're spending it you don't care whether it comes back you're just spending it but if you have the mindset of an investor everything that you spend has to come back with some form of return or some form of profit so if i was in my 20s and i understood the concept of roi return on investment from a investor's perspective it would have stopped me from spending on a lot of things now this is not just limited to the spending of money it also is the spending of time um, energy and any other really really important resources so let's put it this way if i'm going to spend one unit of time so let's say an hour what am i going to get in return if i'm going to spend a hundred pounds on a particular something what am i going to get in return 
if I'm going to spend my energy on doing a particular task, what is the return of that task? Now, when you break things down like that, all of the sudden, the 10 to 12, 14 hours of your day, you start to look at it completely differently because you'll look at certain things and be like, mm, me spending three hours doing this is not really going to be beneficial for me right now. So one thing I understood about this was that it's not that something is good or bad. It's more of the fact, is it beneficial for where I want to go right now? So let's say spending four hours at a party, it might not be the best use of time if you have a sports day tomorrow or an athletic event tomorrow. But if you've been stressed out of your mind over the past month, a party might do you good. So it's not a black and white situation. Is what am I doing right now? And is it in my best interest for what I need moving forward? And that is the investment part. Certain people invest in a property for 20 years knowing that it's a long-term thing, so they don't mind. Certain people invest for two hours, two minutes, knowing that it's going to come back quick. But when you're just spending, 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 you have no clue as to what is going to come back. Okay, number five, more business related. So no matter how good a product is or a service for that matter, if you cannot communicate the value to the market, then it's going to fail. What do I mean by that? In my early 20s, when I was starting my various ventures, especially a creative production company, we focused heavily on the skill sets, like literally becoming better and better at what we do but it wasn't until we got good at communicating to the market that we saw a massive change in the business and a massive uptake in income because if you're really good at something but nobody knows about it then as a business it's irrelevant because your business won't survive so this is why you can have terrible products but they're communicated master but and they still make money whether they make money for 20 years is another a whole other issue but they can still make money because they have understood the power of knowing how to communicate value effectively last but not least the power of focus right now we are in a attention economy everybody is fighting for your attention the big tech companies have mastered how to get people's attention, whether it's Netflix, whether it's Facebook or the social medias, pod, like everybody is after your attention. So it is an absolute prime commodity right now. But learning how to master your focus is absolutely vital and it is a superpower and it's something that i've been doing over the last two years but if i had this knowledge in my early 20s it would have been an absolute booster to my ultimate productivity the reason why that is is because it's important to keep the main thing the main thing and if you don't sacrifice something then ultimately your goals will become the sacrifice when people hear the word sacrifice they often think of it as a negative thing but let me help you sort of reframe how you think of the word sacrifice it's not that something has to necessarily die and you feel bad about it it's the fact that you are now investing your resources in something that's going to bring you more return than a other thing that's let's say a lower return so in a business sense instead of having seven products why not focus on two products that are doing really well in your personal life instead of trying to do like instead of trying to multitask as they say multitasking is great multitasking is not great why not focus on one or two things master it and then move on if you look at any of the great companies of the world or any of the great individual titans of their industries they 
are super hyper focused on the things that they have mastered, like Jay-Z or Warren Buffett. You're not gonna catch Jay-Z all of a sudden trying to be Hussein Bolt, nor are you gonna catch Warren Buffett trying to be Jay-Z. It's not gonna happen. They know their focus, they've taken 100% responsibilities for their actions, and they have invested everything into that thing. So that is the six things. I believe it was six things. Please let me know if it wasn't. Um, that I wish I had known in my 20s that I know now. So hopefully that was helpful for the younger me um, and it was helpful for you. Please feel free to get in contact with me or leave a comment below or follow all of that good stuff. Thank you very much.